Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is the second in a two-part series here of doing homework eight problems when it comes to status flags, data-related operators, indirect addressing, jumps, loops, and the Irvine Library functions. This problem is a little more involved because it uses our best friends. That is sarcasm, of course, because arrays can be very tricky. Uh, especially when they're larger than one byte per element uh, in assembly language because we have to do some real thinking and do some extra math to figure out which exact memory address stores the data that we care about. We don't care about that in any high-level language because the language itself and all of, you know, of its inner workings make sure we don't have to worry about the exact memory address of where data is. But anyway, so we have three variables here. They're all short, so they're all going to, uh, and they're, they're all signed by default here. They're all, they're all going to be S words. So I'm going to have an array of that, and I'm going to call it array. I can call that one array, and I can say eight comma three comma one comma four comma nine comma five comma seven, two six and ten. Okay, so there we go. Got that going for us, and so I can use value which is a pointer all pointers are d words i don't think it matters if it's signed because it's signed versus unsigned that's mostly just for the uh, uh the putting the word here is just usually for the developer not for the assembler itself uh, and i want to use offset array because this is a pointer array is a pointer but i'm going to use a, a value which is a pointer to the same memory address where array is memory and I'm going to have a variable called sum that is going to be an S word and that's going to be a zero. And that should take care of that. I don't think I made a mistake just yet and I won't see it till later on if I did because this will compile, this will build, assemble just fine. Okay, so let's go on and let's move into code land here and see what we can do. Okay, so the trickiness of this is going to be uh, using value to access the array correctly because we're going to want to do things, you know, we're, we're going to want uh, elements two bytes at a time. And if we use int pointers or the, the wrong kind of things, we're going to get the wrong data. I've already graded all of the work, so I, can, I see that many of you are getting incorrect values one way or another. Maybe it's even just on the, you know, printing out, but one way or another, you're not getting the correct data edge. So here, just to get started here, int ECX equals five, that is easy as just moving five into the ECX register. Let me tab this over like one or two more times. To get that out of the way. Okay, make it less, well, let me just do the whole, whole thing. Two more tabs. Oh my, okay, there we go. So then we've done this before in the last example. The do part of this is uh, has to be a label because we're going to be jumping back here again some at some point, and then down here the while is minus minus ECX does not equal zero. And again, that is basically screaming out that this is a loop operation because that's what the loop operation does. It decrements ECX register and then it checks it against zero. Uh, if it is zero, it falls through. The loop is complete. And if it is not zero, then it goes back to the label in which I specify, and that in this case is going to be the again label that I did above. Okay, so I want to, so let me just finish, I, can, I guess I could just do this stuff here, just get that out of the way, and I want to be able to print an equal sign character, so I can move into the AL register, it doesn't have to have a string, you don't have to have a global variable, you just move an equal sign into the AL register, and then you can call write int to do the hard work, I'm sorry, write character, do the hard work there. And then here, if I want to print out sum, I, I have to put that value into the EAX register. The full integer needs to go into the uh, EAX register from sum. And then I can do the same kind of thing where I call write int. And then here, just this is just a CR, call CRLF. Give me an endline character. And then this, oops, you know, down here. This is just call wait message. Okay, so we've got that part done. And if this is runnable at the moment, it will, or not, what I do wrong here, oops. 
Ah, let me just show you what I what's going on with this one. We were talking about this. Uh, maybe you were screaming out at me earlier while I was doing it, but now I, it's time for me to, you know, pay my dues here. Sum is a word, a 16-bit element. EAX is a register, which is a 32-bit register. So since I'm using signed quantities to be able to static cast and work my way up from word to double word to make this work, I need a move sign extension instead of just a plain old move. And usually whenever I do that, I like to like to change, you know, break up my code so everything starts on the same column when it comes to the operands, just the way I operate or whatever it is that I do here. So let me run this now. And now it compiles and I get a zero. Which, you know, I'm, I get, you know, if I change this to an 11 and I try it again, will I get it to print an 11? I should, right? Because nothing's happening in my code. And there it is. And again, don't mind the plus, the, 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 you know, the front leading plus. That's just part of what the Irvine library does. Positive 11 versus negative 11. And that's, you know, that's what I want to do. Let me put this back to zero. And now we're ready to kind of to go again. So what is this program ultimately doing? <laughs> There is an even number of elements, and the first element gets added to some, the second gets subtracted, and so forth and so on five times over. I add something, I subtract something, I do it again. So 8 minus 3 plus 1 minus 4 plus 9 minus 5 plus 7 minus 2 plus 6 minus 10. And I believe the answer is 7, but we will find out. Uh, I'm not going to do it, you know, count up and do that while I'm trying to be showing you guys this. Okay, so right now here, um, you didn't have to necessarily put this line of code in, but that was just to emulate what, uh, what the write int function is going to do, so I'm, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, same goes here for the negative. If you put it in, I didn't, if there's two negative signs or two positive signs or anything like that, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I wasn't going to get crazy about that because it is listed here, but you don't have to worry about that when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with the right int function. Okay, so I want to take value, which is pointing to the same array array is. I want to dereference it, and I want to print out its value. Now, to make this work, it's a little trickier because we're dereferencing, and if whenever I see dereference like this, especially when I'm dealing with a pointer to a, you know, basically a pointer to a pointer and all this crazy stuff, I know it has to be two lines of code. And so the first thing is this, this memory address has to be brought onto a register. And so uh, value is a pointer. So I can move that, a D word, into a D word element here for when it comes to registers. And then what I can do here is move into the a. Uh, let's see. Let me just let me just put it. I'll move into the ax register, whatever's dereferenced at the eax register. So this is the actual dereferencing to get me to the eight, which will, in this case, return a word because I I'm screaming here. Put this into the ax register. So I I should put a word pointer here. Just to say, okay, whatever memory address I'm pointing to, because this is a pointer to an, an S word uh, array, do a word pointer access to it. And then I, I think I can do this, or because I need to call out and I want to call right int from this. And I think I can here, I can just go here and say, okay, move, do, give me a move sign extension into the EAX register from this move a word into there. Let me see if that's too even too much for this line of code here. Nope, that seems to be okay. So hopefully if I did this right, an 8 should print five times. And it does. And so that's, that's what I was expecting to see. Get me the pointer, give me an offset value, give me an address, put it into the EAX register. Hey, I go to that address, get the data stored there, tr you know, basically treat it like a word, get me that 8, put it into the EAX register so I can call the right int on. So yeah, we're, we're pretty much good to go here when it comes to moving on. We've done that line of code, and now this is, you know, and now in the EAX register we have star value, so we can just go ahead and say add into sum whatever's in the EAX. Okay, and now here's the tricky part. You're like plus plus value, and this is 
when especially with C++ and there's languages like this when you have iterators and things like that and uh, well what does that exactly mean if this was C++ we would say okay go over one element and or you know or other languages and whatnot like go over one you know one element inside of here which and in this case is two bytes of storage but it's all taken care of for us at the higher level in the higher level languages but here in x86 assembly language if I tried that and I just incremented value in this case it would not work right because because that means move one byte over. It doesn't really look to see what the element type is like higher level languages do. So to do this correctly, I need to add into value two bytes to account for the size of the elements in the array here, which are words. So those are two bytes. And you could try it once we get this working, try to change the two to one and you'll see that nothing is working like it's intended. Okay, so now um, I've added two to value, and now I can just basically copy this, copy this all here for this stuff, and just change the add into a subtraction, because that was what the the second part of this was, and I copy pasted all the stupid comments with it. But but that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? The the first of the two elements is supposed to be getting me. Uh, is supposed to be added to this to everything and the second is supposed to be subtracted but basically everything is exactly the same and I still have to do this plus plus value here down before I loop again and this should just this should work I believe I'll get the right no. oops I have all sorts of crazy nonsense now add eax comma sum and I'll probably see that twice and okay fair enough and so what I could do here is I remember that we're still using 16 bits and I moved everything up into 32 bits to kind of just to make everybody happy on the Irvine side. But now to kind of get around this where value is, or I'm sorry, which one is this? EAX is a 32-bit register. Sum is a 16-bit variable. I can just say move the AX portion and subtract that off from sum. And that should do it. And the one thing I, I said this earlier, and I knew I was going to regret it, was that you didn't have to, to put the plus and minus characters in the output. You don't for the plus, but you do for the minus down here, because I, I didn't negate anything or anything like that. So before I call write int to do that, I will need to move into the AL register a negative sign, and then call write character to make this look and output like it should. Again, sorry about all the stupid comments not looking perfect. But that should do it then for the whole problem. And that's what I was saying about having all these crazy pluses and minuses and all these things like it's just the way the way things go. If you wanted to, I guess in this case since I am not using negative signs, you could use the right deck instead of right int now that I have the minus sign listed here specifically. Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> um, eh, I thought I did a plus. I guess I, I guess in this case I would need to have the plus now. I'll put this up here before I do all this and just put a plus. And now I think and say like I'll, what to do for your output, right? There we go. Plus eight, minus three, plus one, minus four, blah blah blah. And I do get positive seven out of the deal. Let's see, 9, 18, 25, 41, 7, 12, 14, 20. Wait, what? Eighteen, twenty-five, thirty-one, seven, twelve, fourteen, twenty-four. There you go. 31 minus 24 is 7, and that pretty much covers everything there is to it. And again, the tricky part comes down to how do you treat... How do you work with the Irvine library that needs 32 bits for pretty much everything when you're not dealing with 32-bit sized elements or what you, like in this case the array are 16-bit elements and so forth and so on. So you do have to, you know, there is a little bit of trickiness working your way to and from from 16 to 32 or from 8 to 16 or 8 to 32, those kind of things. But as we move forward, we will kind of push toward just using 32 bits for everything. 
uh, but for right now we're not. Okay, so that is the solution to the problem. If, as always, if you have any questions related to this, as always, send them to me, swordb at cod.edu, comment here on YouTube, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So that covers homework for this week's uh, weeks of work, and uh, now we're moving on to uh, week nine, which is uh, slightly more challenging work when it comes to just using the uh, same operations that we're dealing with. Okay, thanks for sticking out with me as always. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.